Blá 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 was reminded about something from my past. No, I can't believe we just revived Maybe Kane. My mind has can't been confusing this. her with my sister this whole time. Here can't we go. This at all. Okay, let's start with some glorious and some good old-fashioned reading. The lowest amount of gain possible. <laughs> okay, the sound of rain filled the village. <laughs> this is gonna. This is this is awful time. Later, you know let's come back a little bit. <laughs> this is such a terrible time. By the way, this loud parking in the background. Good news, you can't hear it, so that's fine. I'm just facing the microphone the exact opposite direction of the barking. Anyways, the steep cliffs that surround... Uh, the sur you know what? I should be under a blanket. The surrounding area, uh, surrounding the area magnified with sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. And when thin wisps of smoke streamed from the huts as the villagers, huddled in their homes, and waited out the rain. A single child hover, however, braved the down bra had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly towards the wooden hot-shaped weather vane. The center of town, the wanderer reached the vane, which has had existed for as long as anyone can remember, and stared. The mountain face was simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived a shipwreck. It was straight combine of a pale white skin to give the face almost a sexless quality. If the back, if the beak turns east, I go home. If it stayed west, then I, I, the child blinked. The rain slowly dripped down the young one's short hair and began to long descent to the ground. Come on, come on. The child felt a slight breeze and watched some... Watch as the vein slowly creaked to life, spinning this way, and that for a moment it finally settled on the beak, pointing firmly towards the east. East, really? For the vein could move again, a jacked rock, a, a jacked rock came spinning and tumbling through the air, finally striking, striking home against the child's head. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as the hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no, they found me. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continued their assault. Through the rain and the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before their voice rang down. You who can I? Um the voice belonged to Demon Demio. First of all the bullets of the ire. Mary. Kane struggled to stand, and a final stone came skitter skittering through the mud and bounced against her foot. Blood oozed from the cut above her eyes, blurred her vision, but she could not. Uh, she could make out um, the shapes of Demo and his usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed to be taken aback by a moment by Kane's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face, but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? Like the rain, like getting all wet, or do you finally decide to run away from home? Though she knew it was futile, Kane turned to leave. 
before she could get a more a few steps that her children scrambled to surround her, cruelty burning in her eyes. Kare knew those were not the only eyes on her. The tormentors, parents from watch from the safely of their homes of their homes. She was attuned to the cessation. It was one of she had experienced many times before. While some of the villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Connie was something to be hated, and if possible, destroyed. They didn't say you could leave, freak. Those words do it at her like a worm through an apple. Can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong, be brave, he can't hurt me, he can't hurt me, he can't hurt me. Oh look, the little freak is gonna cry. What's wrong? Are you sad that everyone hates you and wants you dead? And I prayed for the, the rain to flood down and carry her away from the world that seems to have no place for her. But if there were gods, they, choose, they chose to ignore her. As Demio crept even closer and closer, the clouds began to thin, the rain slowed. Even if the weather hates me, I'm useless. A failure. Which Demio rocket had taken my head off. And I couldn't meet Demio's leering gaze. She lowered her eyes, stared at the muddy ground below. The bully moved forward until he was inches away. She could smell the scent of an old meat on his breath. The boy grabbed Kane's face with thick fingers and yanked it upwards. He tried to turn away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eye like to pry it open. You're a freak. No, I'm not. Did I just say no? Did you just say no? Maybe you grin evilly. You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not, not even taking his attention away. Protection from Kane, he called to his courts. Come on, guys, let's give this freak what she deserves. As soon as Demo finished, the kicks and blows begin to rain down upon Kane. Demo paused, still grinning, and as Kane curled into a ball, tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak. What, what you're acting like a girl for, huh? Everyone knows what you really are. Kane ignored the question, using instead to stare at the wetter vein, continuing to point east as if confident about the future it had chosen for her. Go home? Yeah, that's a funny joke for someone who's with dead parents and no home to go to. Freak, chanted the children. Freak, freak, freak. Kane closed her eyes, listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the village and children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her world and air. The rain fell. The pain never came. Only when laughter of tremendous turned to terrified cries did she dare open a single blood kick that eye. Kane was shocked to see the mood sprawled to the ground, holding his head screaming in pain. He could see the blood welling from his faces between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh god, he's crying. He's actually crying. The pride of their leader, the other church, glanced back, forth between themselves as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no savior emerged, they began uneasily shuffling away from Kane. But the young girl was the least of their, of their concerns. Instead, their attention was wrapped up on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. After struggling for a breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a Play stick with rage. Hurts like a bitch, don't it? I'll suggest you scatter before I throw another one. And if, and if any of you little bastards ever touch my Kane again, I do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. The old woman crouched down, gently touched the hand of the meal, cover, using it to cover the wound. To think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted it back and forth. How? He screamed, leaping to his feet. Stop it. What are you doing? A bit whining. Ain't no one ever died from a scratch. You hit me with a rock, you stupid bitch. A big one. That could have killed me. The old woman shrugged. Death is the best care for stupid. 
Yuma face twisted with rage at her words, locking eyes on Kane. She took a step backwards and spat on the ground. Get out, leave this village. No one wants you here, either of you. Seeing the old woman grab the other stone, Demo and his companions turned tail and ran. As they fled, and the old woman grabbed her side and barked out a single laugh. Ah, look at the look at the fat boy go. Guess he found he's guess he's healthy enough to run from the fight. The woman smiled, faded as she turned to her turned her attention to Kane. Kneeling down, she removed her straw, straw and placed it around the young girl's shoulders, then produced the cloth from the folds to, of her dress to begin moaning the blood on her forehead. Anyways, oh, Kane said, why don't you fight back? You're stronger than uh, that lot. The words grandmother stung Kane as she turned away. Don't be nice to me. I don't deserve it. Nothing matters anymore. Her tears held in back for so long. She finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. Everyone hates me. They think I could cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was. As Kane's tears turned soft, she felt her, mud her, her grandmother's hands on her shoulder. Despite her advanced age and Yumita's eyes, she was a woman of surprising strength. Surprising strength. And Kane found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk like that, Kane. It's a river wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next. And it got. And it grants no mercy to any attempt to, up to crossing. You've got to fight until your last breath. Understand? The old woman tightened her grip and tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing someone close to you, Kane? No? He survived it. The words hit home. Kane was struck by a force of her love of the, for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know her, of her grandmother. But when her parents died, the, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. Grandma, as Connie called her, was cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence. And their first few years together had not been easy. But with each year passed, Connie and grandma, grandma, grandmother had grown closer. However, it was only now, sitting in the mud of tears, blood taking her face, that Connie truly understood the depths of her affection. Here was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all these things and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone could understand Connie's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do I make you sick, Grandma? Of course not. Don't be an ass. Connie drew, drew her grandmother's moth-eating scrawl around her body and shuddered. But body, not normal. If that was normal, then mom and dad wouldn't hush. Well, not hear another word of this nonsense. You're my granddaughter. I love you. And if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. That. The woman reached out and placed a wreath, reeds, flowers on her on his hair. The skill it took to blend the flowers without breaking the stems and losing a single petal, 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 I don't, I don't know why I said petal, petal was remarkable, and. The beauty of it made Kane want to cry all over again. Oh gosh, these are lunar tears. Grandma, you made this for me? Lunar tears were legendary flowers. Most people could live in their entire lives without seeing one. Yet, her grandmother somehow collected a dozen or more. Kane reached up and touched the thief as if she couldn't believe it was real. Where did you find these? Oh, you know, I just stumbled on them one day while I was doing the chopping. The old woman turned away as she was explaining, leading, leading Connie to suspect that the search was had been much more difficult than she was letting on. And my nose just stopped. I truly am allergic to stream. The pain, the pains she took to construct the ornament, let alone track down the flowers used in construction, and Connie had her. She reached up gently, adjusting her wreath. Wreath. 
admiring I'm gonna mispronounce so many words today. <laughs> admiring the way it fell between her fingers. It didn't quite turn out right, said her grandmother as she squinted at it. Those old hands have trouble with this delicate work. It sure looks good on a girl, pretty girl like you. And then he blushed and turned away. You think I'm pretty? Of course you are. I'm not doing the stutter, by the way, <laughs> as you noticed. Of course you are. What a fool thing to say. Thank you, Grandma. Eh, her grandmother smiled. We're gonna be fine, you and me. As long as we got each other, we will be fine. And I took her grandmother's hands in hers and, and then stripped to their feet. As they begin the long, long home. <laughs> I just remembered what happened to this. Cuddy gripped her the hand with her, all her might, as if trying to stop the smoke from drifting away on the wind. The rain had stopped. Cuddy stood beneath the wetter mane and watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced. Stopped. I don't need to escape. I have home now. Grandma lost me. That's enough. Even if it does, I get into the world. And they let her drift up the past, the vein into the cloudy sky. The last faint of a rainbow slowly fading. She turned headed home, headed for home, and the light scattered into millions of particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. <laughs> a lot of reading. There's a lot of reading in this beginning section. In the distance, Kane heard a steady sound of an axe striking wood. The noise had purposely purposeful, purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. I don't know why my nose is actually stuffed. I was literally fine a few seconds ago. Fireworks are being produced. <laughs> Alright. The firework uh, the firewood being produced, however. It was far from the work of art that could be, as it could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung about a barren yard with, a wild, with wild abandon. Anyone who was trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. through, through, through. I don't know why I'm <laughs> stupid piece of shit of axe. Stupid piece of shit of axe. A piece, stupid piece of shit axe. I don't know why I'm having such a difficult time reading today. <laughs> yeah. Honey, the grandmother flailed away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and words that would make it most make most hardened sailors brush, blush. Grandma, Kane, what Kane? What? Yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. What's you, Kane? Don't get too close. I might take your goddamn foot off by mistake. You brought an axe down, a piece of wood, setting the chips in every direction. One spun past Kane, close enough for her to hear the whistle. At which point she decided to step back. Once she scattered it to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma, do you need help? Can I get you water or lunch or a new axe or something? The axe poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in the midair, and the old woman considered the granddaughter's offer for more and then smiled. Hmm. Tell you what, since I'm doing such a piss poor job of chopping, why don't you come here and take over so I can get some go get some get the water? Beats have been restless 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 lately. You know, I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Relinquishing the axe, the, her grandmother picked up a long pole with a wooden bucket on either end. Gathering water was far the more difficult than of the two jobs. Connie knew better than to complain. Once grandma was set, there was no changing it. Connie did her best to help out with the chores. Grandma took every task that required to travel to, to the village. Oh, she had a had a long list of possible excuses. Honey knew the real reason she didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted and harassed by the villagers. 
Once Connie moved in, Grandma decided to take up the residence a good distance from the IRA. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, it seemed to be the best policy when it comes to the, the, to the villagers and her granddaughter. Where were the days when, she, when any but the two of them could be found on the rocky acre of land they called? Connie enjoyed the solitude, but harbored a secret resentment that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such a place. After watching her grandmother leave, Connie turned her attention to the task at hand. She had never chopped wood before in her life, and soon discovered why the old woman hated for. Swing after swing of the axe produced only a tiny crack in the wood. When she finally managed to connect those solid strokes, the two embedded themselves in the log and refused to budge. Budge? Budge? Budge. I don't know why I'm trying to change anything. I'm frustrated. Honey swung the axe around her head, threw it, and threw it, log and all, across the yard. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, crap. He suddenly understood the joy that her grandmother felt in the good curse. Happier now, she picked up the axe and forced it from the wood and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with the blade, but the task was challenging. Blisters soon began to form on her small pink hands. This is tough. All of, all of the all and my lungs are and my lungs are all weird sizes. Splitting her Splitting is spitting on her palms, ignoring the pain, Connie re redoubled her efforts. Just as she was let up in a room, grandma returned from the village. Setting, settling down her buckets with a small sigh. She took one look at the logs, coughed out a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy, girl. Better practice if you. And Gravin suddenly collapsed on her knees, causing one of her buckets to wobble. She curled. Eyes wide. I just couldn't skip it. Okay. Keep, you know, pacing going. Eyes wide. Connie dropped the axe and ran her. To her grandmother's side. Grandma. The old woman shook her head and pointed trembling at trembling finger at the bucket. Get the bucket. Can't let it spill. And I steady the bucket with a foot. She's knelt by her grandmother with a foot. She knelt by her grandmother and she a small bit of water slunched over the side and made a new home in her hem of her dress. But Connie didn't notice. Grandma, Grandma, what's happening? Ray's panic, she grabbed her gram grandmother by the shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and battered, battered Connie away. Stop that. Just, just now, stop that now. She cried, breathing heavily. It's ain't like I'm dying. Just tired from the trip is all. Connie desperately wanted to believe her. But one look at her, the old woman, shaking hands worn face told her more than the words ever could her grandmother had lived a long hard life and it seemed like the bill was coming due the time when her grandmother watched over kane was ending sooner than later than sooner than either of them had feared the decisions would be reversed next morning kane came to her side Side of a grandmother on bed took her wrinkling hand. Grandma, you're sick. You need medicine. I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head, tried to rise, but Connie gently pushed her down. It's all right. I'll be fine. Oh, Ram. Grandmother fixed her with her gaze that can melt steel. After what seems like an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. Well, I don't like it, goddammit. But, but I guess I should quit being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched Kane strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village.
Hours later, as unseen, when the sun made, it, made its way across a dark and rainy sky, she was still watching. You know, I don't know why I have to get a stuffy nose every time I read. I know it's Kane. Kane moved at a brisk, brisk pace, checking her pockets every few minutes, making sure the money that her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade or worse demon of his gang. But she encountered neither tormentors or nor shades, and Kane finally found herself at the entrance of, to the village. If the few adults she could see glanced sideways at her and muttered to each other behind raised hands, was slinking the way into the shadows. Her heart racing, Kane took a series of rapid, shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. I have to prove myself. I have to help Karamo. I have to be strong. She chanted those words to herself over and over as she slowly made her way. Finally, her eyes settled on a rotter mountain. Older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air, telling anyone who listened but she thought of Kane's presence. Hey, lady. The Kane with Barado she did not fear. Feel. Weird stuff, Joshi. <laughs> when flabbered cheeks shook in bewildered anger, how dare this thing speak to me? They seemed to say. But Kane saw that her eyes had a different emotion fear. Yeah, we're both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way? The woman pointed at the small building to her right before hitching up her dress and stumbling off in the other direction. Kane cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the assembled crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with strange sense of pride as she made her way to the Apache. La, 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 la. I forgot how to say this word, so I'm just gonna skip it. But the new emotion had a little time to take the root, for as soon as she opened the door, she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. And see, he had clearly been sitting here on some kind of flamelier, but because the King of Flower Flowers was nowhere to be found. Oh my. He sputtered. I mean, um, what are you doing here, freak? The insult was delivered without force. And I happily ignored it, writing on the tiptoes the over the counter, she asked the shopkeeper for the medicine medication. Ah. Brick demo. Did that old bitch finally knee over? He over? He over. Go to hell, demo. The boy eyes grew wide, seemed ready to fall out of his head, but before he could let it fly back, um, fly come back, or worse, a punch. But Pachi told him to knock it off before they picked him out of his, the store. Demo slunk out of the shop, cursing Kane under his breath. Once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe one more and take a brief tour of the shop while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles of cramp filled in the cramp, over each with a label written in some indecipherable language. In an ocean of aromas that salted her nose, a craving a scent I was exotic. I wish I had my nose, but not a dough. Oh, I love to get her pleasant, unpleasant. Seeing a variety of supply, gave Kane a sense of the peace. Surely in the world so vast, give a place that she could walk home. On the far wall behind the counter, a raised porch rested portrait of a stunning young girl. The picture had once a vein of bright ribbon colors, but the time had worked its magic and they were beginning to fade. The beauty of the work, however, remained undiminished. You like that picture? And I turned to the budget. With a small vial of medication in his hand, the eyes were, were gentle but sad, and they stared was nothing unto nothing as he spoke. 
That's my daughter. I sketched him when she was just a little girl. Been dead for a time now. Kane didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait, tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things. Continue on the job, job keeper. They let us let the ones closer to you live on forever. He shook his head slightly, then looked down at Kane, smiled, and handed her the medication. He reached into the sizable green of her and produced a handful of wa old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left out to draw. Kane took an instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper to face to darken. Yes, I heard the rumors about you, he said. It's a small village. Words travels quickly. But between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe. Oh, but I also don't think they matter much. I knew your grandmother. And the thing the way she was driven out of this town is deplorable. Grandma's name is Akane. Suddenly, she was still more over in the new fact of her mind. She reached out. Gently took the crayons from them hands. Your grandmother is an old friend of mine. That as much Kane scooted away. Yet again, I owe her so much. I'm willing to wager that she will like it if if like it if you drew a picture of her. As I think she will like it that very much. And I had a really quiet agreement, but inside her heart, heart was busting. Never before a village would treat over anything but complete content. It was a tiny, almost perpetual step, but it was a step nonetheless. If it entered with enough tiny steps, she might one day discover the rest of the world. When Kane returned home, she found her grandmother asleep. In her bed, feet black and raw, even bleeding in places. Bit in places, bleeding Kane to think she had been pacing around the room and stuff. The exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old woman and clasped around her arm. Back already, aren't you? Asked her grandmother with a yawn. Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandma sat and examined Connie head to toe, finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen. Her grandchild, she leaned back and allowed her herself to relax. Oh, well, how was it? Did those bastards give you any trouble? It was kind of fun, said Connie with a small smile. Well, seriously, it was. It was fun, huh? Was it? Asked her grandmother in a voice which implied you'd believe, in, believe anything but. Uh huh, so anytime you need, need to run an error, just let me know. As she. As she spoke, Kane removed the crayons from her pocket and brief explanation of their source. <laughs> she informed her grandmother she was going to sketch her a portrait. Portrait of me? Ridiculous. No one to stare at a wrinkled old crow. Grandma, it'll make you live forever. Or as Lanny said her grandmother, throwing back the sheet of from her bed. Living forever would just piss me off. Now put those crayons away and help you with dinner. How I would not relent. In the, in the end, grandma, grandma found herself leaning against the wall of her house and posing as if, as if posing for a master art. I really need to blow my nose. And I took up, took up with the crayons and hide her subject carefully. She has, just as the grandmother was about to nod off, Kane finished her, the work, and after staring at it for a bit, she released, she released it from her grip and let it slowly drift to the floor. Here, what does it look like you at all? Sorry, Grandma. I thought I had those cr these crayons. What do you know? They can try. What do you know? They can try it easy or something. The old woman's eyes looked at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that. He said, ignoring the pain of in her back, reaching for the paper. Yes, it could have been a person's face. It also could have been a border. The lumbar can't lie. The crabbly misshapen loaf of bread 
all rather like chaotic array of colors. The one woman stared at the picture for a long time and slowly got a laugh. Not I. You truly are my blood. You're clumsy as me, and I love it. but gosh, I won't hear any more. Oh, how ugly you think. It came from the heart, and I'll treasure it always. Here to her word. The old woman gave the picture a place of honor. Above the kitchen name. The names that followed. They would, would have often catch her staring at the portrait with a strange smile on her face. As the actor, she had turned with a silent mock in her laughter. A week later, Connie could stand. Damn it no more. Axel Kravitz took the artwork down. Push. I'll take this down when they roll me in. <laughs> you pop this for a bit and then turn cut it and dropped. This to be girl. See, this picture makes me happy the way I never felt before. Makes me want to go. <laughs> wants me to go on and so someday you, could, you can't feel the same happiness. The moment burned itself in Connie's memory. What a perfect blend of pride and love and joy that came in together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who had made her place. Well, time to move on. People made memories come in and go, come out of life, life like ghosts passing through a hall. But this moment will be for the different Connie swore. I will remember it forever. Forever. Separation! It's time for tragedy. I need to take a drink. Okay. A lot of reading. A lot of reading. I should I should have prepped this. I should have prepped. I should have made sure my nose was prepped. I should have made sure I was prepped. Kane listened to the sound of crackling fire stared at the black object on her plate. She'd been pushing it around the wooden desk for a good ten minutes, ignoring the bemused stare of her grandmother. Finally she summoned her courage and gave the object a brief a brief sniff. A sharp bitter scent flew up her nostrils and made it its home there, causing her to face the twist and disgust. Ram, I can't believe you want me to eat a bug. The old woman threw some more wood under the cooking pot and snorted. No bug, you fool. It's a berry. Why in the hell would I be feeding you bugs? Yeah, I will, it looks like a bug. The clinic, and I think it'll burn something because it smells terrible. That nah, Connie held her nose to the berry. Doing as little as possible. Found interruption. Like, oh yeah, that's terrible. All right, you know I'm deserved the little. Okay, it was why you little brat. Laughed the old woman. Look at this ass on. You've been spending too much time with me, and that's a fact. Five years has passed since the moment when Connie, when Connie's grandmother saved her from the bullies. As a, as it was often the way of two stubborn people, their relationship had grown in fits. Starts. But move forward all the same. Meals that used to be somber affairs and allow filled with laughter. Road abuse and equal measure. Equal measure. Connie could not remember a time when she had been happier. As the years went by, Connie started to show her more daily responsibility. Grandmother's leg grew weaker. And she could no longer do many of her chores she used to take for granted. So this morning... Connie lacing up her work boots, have a breakfast burn, a burnt berry rolling through her belly. Where are you going today? Asked Grandma suddenly. Honey, old woman rarely asked her specifically. I check out the, the climate trees and see if you're. I thought I could make some jam or something. Oh, I'm going to pick up some black stove. And I need to make. To take the weir barrel. What in hell floor? Anne stared at her grandmother. 
and held out her arm, swept around home, constructing mostly of cloth and rope and rope. This old place sagged like a boxer in the final round. Grandma, a dying cat will shoot through this house. I'm going to build a stone wall so we can have some protection. The old woman laughed at closing her toothless grin to the world. God damn, girl, if a bunch of thieves want to ransack this old place, let them come. We have nothing worth stealing any. I'm not worried about the thieves. We're more worried about the shade. People saw one in the west and... The old woman tilted her head and stared at her granddaughter. Oh shoot, I don't know why you have to do it any do it today. We have to worry about it. It's better. Grandma, no. I don't go. The I don't go. The kim won't eat. He won't eat tonight. Okay, let me repeat this. I skip the. I don't go to the kim. It's only. Few expression passed across the old face. For a moment, she she was a small child lost in the. Yes, a bit. bit. Yes. Okay. Right. Right. Kane. Same. Same as my mind is. Didn't finish the thought. Then walk for the night set. Taking the wheel, tears from the drawer, the flowers and petals age gently. But I thought it was more beautiful now. The day she first received it. You're gonna be a true woman. Grandma said as she placed the flowers on the, the girl's hair. So that means less shatter about shades and building defense and talk about more about how beautiful you became. No, I kind of reached up to the Remove the garden card, garden, 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 and but the look on the grandmother's face stopped at her hand. Her beautiful thing, said the old woman. There's an angel there like you. I'm very proud of you. I just saw something captioned. I'm just okay, grandma. That's enough of your goddamn compliments for one day. Such a mouth on you. When, which, where did that come from? A G. I wonder. I'll teach you to sass me, girl. Yo, grandma. <laughs> Suddenly, Lurch, Lurch blow her crap caught in by the ears, filling her around the room with a crazed grin on her face. Grandma. Yo, Kane. Grandma, stop it. What the hell? The old woman stared at her, blinked, and fully held her wrinkle. First time she ever seen them. Oh, I don't know. Have it. I'm sorry, girl. Sometimes I'm like, yes. Kane. I looked at her grammar's face. Maybe, maybe I should stay. Oh. I won't let you have to stay here than to keep keep an eye on an old cougar like me. You look at your fruit. Oh. I'm not. I'll be fine. And when you come back, I have some nice crafts off for dinner waiting for you. <laughs> Connie wrote her eye. Uh, Rolled her eyes, kissed her grandmother, and on the forehead. Made her re ready to depart, trying desperately to ignore the worry that was gnawing on at the wall of her heart. Connie could feel the old woman as she. Don't turn around, don't turn around, she told But in the end, the temptation was too great. She spun a heel, final look she saw was a bent woman standing in the, the ramshackle of a hut with expression on her face. God, she's so old now. Like the one could reach down and just carry her away. Honey worried that her about her grandmother all day, causing her causing her to work to suffer. What little fruit she could collect was tossed her in the wheelbarrow. She only found a couple of stones were losing interest in the project. Finally as the dusk approached, she decided to call it. Hurting herself for the lack of focus, Kane pushed the nearly empty wheelbarrow back back down the path. As she crested the final hill, she suddenly froze in place. A wheelbarrow fell from her fingers, collapsed on the side, and a few pieces of wrinkled brown, wrinkled brown fruit rolling, rolling back down the hill. Her gaze was transfixed by a thick black cloud hovered just ahead, tracing its path with a finger. Kandi suddenly felt her stomach not in her on her toe. Oh no, oh gods, no. 
the grandmother's house was ablaze, the flames licking up as if trying to touch the sky itself. Grandma, grandma, and I ran faster than had never had ever moved in her life. Once she tripped on the stone, went sprawling into the rocky ground, and she leapt to her feet, continuing running unmindfully. And I'm mindful the blood that just spilled from her wounded hands and knees. It got closer and closer. Tiny minds begin to raise at the time with her footfalls. It's too dark. Too dark. Not just fire. Can't be fire. Too much smoke. Gotta save her. Gotta save her. She burst into the front yard. Came into the sudden hut. Hot. Ah. Her worst suspicion confirmed the smoke from the fire was mingling with the thick, equally blackness of enormous shade. Massive creature supported itself on three twisted feet. Keep the balance through the means of a large armored tail. Gale horns, claws sprouted from its body in a random chaotic pattern, giving it the appearance of a lizard designed by some thing god. Thing Connie let out a roar, flicked its tail, setting a small wheel, 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 wheel spinning around the yard. My reading ability is depleting. <laughs> For a moment, the creature retreated in the shimmering ink blackness. As if the mind was unable to comprehend that such a thing could actually exist. But then, if the smell hit her, blend with rotted meat, excrement, and the horror became real once more. The creature bellowed again, and at this time, Connie responded with a scream of her own. Alright, you bastard. He thought as her scream echoed off a high cliffs at them. It's you or me. Let's go. The shade eyed Connie with a bemused interest. Then it began looking from her to the house and back again, as if urging her to look at the destruction that had leafly wrought. The dread of the dread built building in her heart, Connie glanced towards the house through the smoke and flames, and she spotted a small figure struggling to escape the ruins. Grandma, the sound of her voice, she's alive, she's alive. Connie's legs sprang to life, raced across the yard, the flaming wreckage of the house before she could advance. In a few steps, the shade opened its mouth and let out a roar powerful enough to uproot trees and send them flying. The blast sent Connie's trembling through the air before smashing her head her against the rocky earth. The stars danced in the front of her eyes as she tried to remember how the, her legs worked. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Now. As Connie struggled to her feet, the shade stepped up towards the house and pinned her grandmother to the ground with the tip of, of his paw. The old woman struggled to move the claw from her stomach, but she might as well have been pushing a mountain. She coughed briefly, sending a small spray of blood into the air and collapsed into the ground with her energy spent. Honey lur lurched her V, fall back onto her to earth, which with a grasp her ankles were on fire, and one of them, or like, I'm getting tired, <laughs> both of them were surely broken. Ignoring the pain that just screamed through her body, she began dragging herself across the ground, leaving a drunken trail of dust and blood in her wake. Grandma put on just a little longer. Her grandmother's face was turning blue, her eyes rolling back until only the whites were exposed. Honey pulled herself across the ground. Maddling slowness. The distance seems to increase every second that passed. The shade glanced between the two. The two women flickered, flicked, flickered out. Its tongue and giant mouth tuning and turning up at the, at the corners. Bird pan panting breaths flitters from somewhere deep inside its core. Bastard laughing at us. He had no, I no idea how such a mindless creature experienced emotion. But there could be no doubt that 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 shade was taking joy in, the, in their suffering. Yeah, I see your plan. The shade moved with his claws, slightly allowing Grandma to breathe again. It was clearly keeping her alive to snuff her life, to snuff out her life when Kanye was close enough to touch her. Killed this bastard, dominating all her strength. Kanye rose to her feet. There was sickening snap. From her right angle as her foot twisted backward, but she forced it from her mind. 
beginning to wobble towards the monster. Pulling a small knife from the pouch of her at her wrist, at her waist, um, she leaped on the floor that pinned her grandmother and plunged the weapon deep. Give her back, she screamed. Give her back to me. It was it, it was like stabbing a rock. After a few swipes, the knife broke at the hilt with a dull snap. The shade pan pan panted with la laughter again. Then it raised its tail, sent it rushing through the air towards the young girl that was lashed to the its foot. I'm stuttering quite a bit. Kane never had a chance. The tail struck her square, struck her, struck her square in the chest and sent her crashing into the burning wreckage of, of the home. As she laid on the on the ground, blood pouring from multiple wounds, a small weak voice spoke up. Kane. My vision blurred as she forced herself to focus on the sound. Finally, her eyes cleared enough for her to make out the grandmother's hands reaching out to her. Did it smoke, Grandma? Honey, you gotta run. You can't defeat him. Honey grabbed the hands that held, held on with all her strength. Grandma, come on, we have to go. The old woman coughed loudly. One of her hands slipped the blood slipped from Honey's grasp. Dumped it to the ground below. Grandma, no, no. I said run, goddammit. You have to. You have to live. I forgot to read the let rest, I guess. <laughs> I thought the wood, I thought the wood, the wood daughter would stay for, forever unfinished before she could say another word. The shade clawed a foot that suddenly it smashing through the remains of the roof down upon the shattered figure of the old woman. Blood oozed thickly from the, gra the gaps. The, in the thick creature's doves, as the terrible Richard smell sought his Kane's nose once again. Ah. He stared at the foot, dumbfounded, convinced that what she was seeing was not possibly real. The creature finally lifted its appendage. All that remains underneath was a twisted, unrecognizable mess, mass of rubble and red. Her grandmother was gone, and I blinked, trying to feel the hands that which had in her hers just a moment before her fleeting second instant she could remember the warmth of that embrace the trembling of the fingers but then the cessation drift away on the breeze dawn memories flashed through connie's mind once after the other faster and faster until they became meaningless jangle of noise i screamed then a thunderous sound echoed off the cliff seemed to roll away forever. The shade of eased forward, a, a black ichor pouring from its mouth and dissolving into the smoke on the ground below. The earth shook with every step it crept towards its prey. Connie's body slowly rose as if controlled by a mad puppet, mad pu puppet master. Her arms and legs were bent at impossible angles. Her head lawed dangerously to the side, yet somehow she managed to stand. Staring at the shade, her eyes began to glow with deep red fire. The creature was so calm that just moments before, it took a slow instant step backwards trying to discern if the human, this broken human could possibly pose a trap. Connie seized the moment, laughing like a mad woman. She leapt into the air, punched, punched the shattered hilt of her knife deep into the, into the leg of the, the shade. The shade shook at her, took off. Shook Kane off like a fly, sending her crashing to the earth once again. Her, her chest rose, felt slowly as if a great weight resting on it. Moist, the moist sounds of pain echoed through her mind. Something warm, thick oozed from her ears. That blood, I think it is. I'm bleeding to death. No, I can't, I can't die. Grandma told me that. Do. Demon sign Kane's mind. Something finally broke. The sound of, the sound of pain. Smoke, flames, it all faded away until you remember one single incantation. Beat it over and over again. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill 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 kill. Anyways. As the spark As the spark that counting was slowly beginning to flicker, the die, she felt her desire to kill her and her desire to live fled into one. The distance between harpies grew lo longer and longer and longer. 
God, that was like an hour of reading. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh God, I'm not reading that in the remake. By the way, I'm not reading it. Okay, I I'm done. Okay, we just saved Kane. Oh God. The beast approaches. Oh God. Oh, I got it. Oh. Where's the water? Power of constant speaking. Oh god. I had no breaks there. Oh god. Alright, where were we? Okay, we're gonna take out this boss real quick. It's super easy. Uh -huh. Got the spear really easily, you know. Oh god, I, that was a lot of reading. Oh my god. Okay, that was so much reading. <laughs> Oh my god, did, didn't the music overpower me? Probably, probably did. Probably actually did. I did it. I was paying attention to the audio. <laughs> if, that, if that happened, I, I, I would, I'm gonna be annoyed, but oh well. Hey. Okay. Alright, it starts off a one hour of reading. In lost audiobooks now. Am I, am I, am I, am I, a, am I, a, am I a reader now? Am, am I just gonna read books now out loud here? We're skipping this or not watching this. Oh fucking god. Fuck. Please, please. Okay, gently, gently, weakly, softly. The shade. Okay. Mm. Give, give me a, give me like a moment. Give me a moment. I thought I thought I had time to just for like a moment. Like we get a like a little bit before we get to the <sighs> Gently, weakly, awfully, the shade sure. sure that its tormentor was dead, turned and stomped off towards the horizon, stomping along the way to the below. One final roar. I couldn't kill it. Sorry, so sorry, Grandma. Couldn't avenge you. Shame beyond imagining. Kane tried to turn her head out, head to the side, only to see coughing up a huge gout of blood. It was getting difficult. Only after a moment of her fierce concentration did she realize her left eye was gone, laughing to herself. She turned her remaining eye to the ruins of her home and noticed a rag stumped of her arm resting a few feet away. Yep, that's mine, she thought with a mad giggle. This is gonna be cool. this is this is gonna make clapping a real bitch. Ah, uh, she cried, sudden, a sudden voice, depths of her mind. Finally, gonna die, are you? Well, you had it coming. Pull the hell the moon, she thought. An uneasy silent. Pull the hell before I plucked your eyes and feed them to the dogs. Dog. The voice of her childhood terror evaporated into smoke, only to replace by another more recent voice. Hold still. More draw. Demetrizing from the ruins of like a ghost. I want to draw you. That's the only way you can live forever. No, stop. I don't want to live forever. I want to die right here. I see. Well, if that's how you want it. The spectral shopkeeper fluttered in, in and out of existence for a moment, but then produced a piece of paper and sketched it quickly. After a few seconds, turned the page to Kane and said, You rejected my offer. I decided to draw someone else. It was a picture of a grandmother, a real life, real as life. And I opened her mouth, thing the man, but it stopped as the picture began to blacken in the middle. Before she could say anything, thousands of multi-legged insects began to swarm across the image, tearing it, and tearing it at it with a sharpened pin. Stop it! Don't hurt the picture. At that picture, Connie reached out with her remaining arm and waved fluently at the air. To her surprise, the insects fell off of the picture in the ground below, where they vanished into the tiny black tendrils of smoke. Relieved, Kane turned her good eye back into the picture, only to open her mouth in a silent scream. The sketch now showed her grandmother as she truly was, a smashed, unrecognizable lump of nothing. 
at her smile. Turned into a broke into a jolly dance. See that? She cried. Dance chick, it's perfect now. She just look like she looks just like you. That should I look sh like that? Oh god. Oh god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Our shitty voice acting skills are showing today. <laughs> Crowning in despair, Kane laid her back in the mud. Spoke of her ruined house. Waited for the end to come. But just before she was let everything go, unfamiliar voice began whispering her. And you gotta wish sunshine. The voice was vulgar and fierce, at the same time as if instantly some had somehow find a way to take Kanae if wanted to scream, as if the voice crawled under her skin but her lungs refused to work. Yeah, you know, I wish, like a prayer or something. And why don't you just get on your knees and start praying to heaven? Please, a visible man in this- Save me, save me! <laughs> Kane really finally restored her to her shouting voice with her mind. I don't make witches. They don't come truth for me. A curse, I'm a freak. Be left to die. Other voice bloomed in her ears. Why, ha, ha. Oh, oh god, you are the best. Kane glanced down and saw a black shiny substance oozing from her legs. Try to push brush away. Then her remaining arm would not. The substance slowly crept around her feet and then began moving up towards the rest of her body. Is this death? Is this what, it, what it's like? Or is it my mind just losing itself? She could feel the slime oozing upward. Feel the hot searing pain it left in its wake. Whatever else might be happening, she was still alive. This was real. Come on, said the voice. Let's go. Let it go. Kane tried to ignore the voice and concentrate on the pain, but the newcomer wouldn't have none of it. Don't ignore me, sunshine. You're ready to give up, ready to die, so let me have. So why not let me have it? What? What? Your body, come on, give it to me. Give it to me. I want to sit down on the ground. I want to feel the rain. I want to taste the wind. The voice paused as if licking its lips. When it resumed, when it resumed, it was filled with mad, unbated joy. I want to take your hands, use them, choke on the goddamn life out of people. I want to tear out the throat. I want to bathe in the blood, just like before. In response, Kane shifted her head, vomited, warmth, the warmth of it crept down, run, mingled with the pain of the encroaching black ooze. Are you, are you a shade? <laughs> yeah, maybe. What of it? The good news, I can make my laugh. I can make a laugh on demand. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna do a fake. I think my laugh fits, you know? <laughs> the slime reached her feet, crept, crept up past her nose, slowly oozed into the socket of her missing eye. The moment touched, the moment it touched her brain, Kanye was struck by the most powerful sensation she ever felt. It was ecstasy. Ecstasy. She wanted to be to scream with delight, but she all she could manage was a small whispered moan. Feel good, don't it? The voice with a chuckle. Yeah, what can I say? I know the police to leave. I'll give me the body. You mean the body? I'll give you more of this feeling. The fear trade. A black lump began to protrude Connie as she grew larger and thicker, and taking form of her missing arm. I can see better, she thought. My eyes be growing back too. The slime reached and lit up the rest of her face, but she managed to brush it away. Stop, she whispered. She regained her voice. Stop. The black goose hesitated, as if considering this request and shimmering down her body before disappearing into a cloud of smoke. What the hell, sunshine? We had a deal. I thought you wanted to die. I said I can't die yet. A brief image of her grandmother bloody and broken flashed before her eyes. She saw the shade that she that had killed that had killed her. Heard a mocking laugh. And closed it, her eyes forced the image from her mind. Her whole body quaking with rage, she opened her eyes again. You were burned bright red. That thing took my crap butter. I have to kill it before I die. 
and I glanced down and saw a mysterious pattern of the shade. It burned itself into her arm. Well, I we damn, I said. Look at that, sunshine. I think you and me are going to be good friends now. And I stared and turned intently, intensely at her arm. The more emotional she felt, the more letters seemed to ready to puncture her skin, begin to affecting the rest of her body. The arm clearly had a will of its own now. Stop. Gotta stop. Putting her left arm in her right, and I took a deep breath, tried to calm herself. Come on, don't fight it, pleaded the voice. I hate my favorite, favorite dish. He just hates my favorite dish, and I'm hungry. Let, let it go. Feel the anger. Burn with fire. Thirst for blood. Then go out there and... Shut up. Shut up. Get the hell out of my body. <laughs> Your body. Oh, that's rich sunshine. Real rich. Look at you. Why don't you just up and die so I can just have this body for my own to myself? Why don't... Why do you say... I bet those buddy of yours and Ari would love to see you dead. And I grabbed a nearby shard of glass, tried to saw it off. Shade infected a portion of her side. Before she could, before she could hurt her, and left arm grabbed her right wrist, crushing Tane, screamed and the shard as the sound of bone, bone crushing. I'm fucking losing the ability to read right now. Bro, crutching on her fill the, fill the air. Okay, the next paragraph will be fine. Next sentence will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid idiot girl. You're possessed now, sunshine. There's no way. There ain't no way to going back. The voice laughed again. A loud, long wail seemed to go on without end. Possessed, whispered Connie. Yeah, possess you and me. We gotta... You got my call a time share arrangement. Remember how folks used to think you're a freak? Now, well, wait till they got a load of you now. Connie looked up in tears. Her eyes in the sky seemed, seemed smaller and somehow darker. Just because that shade, is this how they see the world? Oh, uh, um, listen, hear the voice. I know this whole possession thing may seem, possession thing seem a bit sudden. But it ain't all bad. There's plenty in it for you, you too. I'm a fair, powerful creature, sunshine. And now that the power belongs to you. You got enemies. You want to kill I can make them make it happen. That little fat kid who keep picking on you. That big old shade that squashed your granny. will wrap them up in their own assholes. No more abuse for you, sunshine. No more pain. Wait, you're a shade. Why would you help me kill another shade? What do you think of some type of kind of some kind of racist, some killing snob? I don't give a goddamn who you who you murder in your pants. I just want to drink it from the well. Honey considered this uh, as she shrugged her to her feet. The power of Shay cursing through her, the smoke from her house drifting away with the wind. She enjoyed the way the cool evening breeze felt on her new left arm. There are long pause. The voice spoke up again. Oh, how about it? You and me. Have some good times together. Look, I even take care of the bloody part. You don't want it. Fuck off, ass. So I had those killing. Bah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you go. I have to get the laugh going. You know, I gotta practice my fake laughs. <laughs> I could, I could. Uh, Look at you go, sunshine. We're gonna have so much fun. So listen. To my name is Ham. If you ever need me, just I'll be hanging out. Place a piece of meat you call a heart. Now get to it. More we kill, more of your heart turns to rotten and sour, and I like rotten and sour. Donna found herself nodding at the voice. Yeah, she said. Yeah, I think this can work. I'm going to find that shade, and I'm going to strangle it with its own god. And I'm, when I'm done, I'm going to do it the same to you. Count on it. Ah, uh, laugh. <laughs> shit bigger than you. I have shit bigger than you, so good luck with that. Oh, hello, and hey, one more thing right now. You will be sharing this money. If you ever run out of hate, if you ever go soft, if, if you ever, you know, go soft, then I'm going to take over everything. everything. So keep on killing, sunshine, and watch your back. The voice grew fainter, gradually faded away, fading somewhere deep inside Connie's herself. 
And I waited until she was sure the voice was gone, and then waved her new left arm a few times. It felt perfect normal. She tightened. It feels perfectly normal. She stopped. It feels like mine. Desperately, she began poking and prodding the new limb, determined to find something wrong with it. Didn't want it to feel normal. That would mean the creature inside of her had already won. I'm not a sh- Oh, eh? Repeating this mantra in her mind, she slowly began digging through the rubble of her house, carefully ignore certain red stains spot in the, go the corner. Finally, after a what to be like an eternity of heartbreaking work, she found what she was looking for. Lunar tears, yeah. Thought it was true. So it had been through hell and back. The garland petals were as bright as ever. Kane started to place it in her hair. I slowly lowered the reef and stared at it. Sorry, Grandma. So sorry. But I don't deserve to wear this anymore. Because this erupt a freak, and this time I don't think there's any going back. Holding the flowers to her head, Kane fell to the ground and sobbed. As the night gradually lightened to the dawn, and the people in the area rose to their daily lives, they remained in, the, in the, that position as if tears could somehow wash away the horror that just affected her world. Okay. Finally. Now I'm done rigging. Ah, they took an hour and 11 minutes. Tiny, you gotta live. You gotta come back to us. Like shit. What? How long has it been? Five years. Oh, that's a long time. We are still no closer to finding her. We need a way to locate the Shadow Lord. This is for you. Lunar tears. Did you miss them? Just a little welcome back gift. Not much, I know. It's nothing like the one Grandma used to make, but... Freed Kaine. That's great. Listen, I talked to your grandmother. This doesn't make sense. Please, I think I'm tired and scared, and I'm sorry. It's crap. It's okay. We can sleep outside. No one's sleeping outside. You and Kaine saved this village, and now they want to run you out? People are afraid of us. Really, I understand. I mean, look at you. As long as you're still with us, I can deal with it. Right, Kaine? I'm used to sleeping outside. I'm sorry. We'll see you later. We're sorry. Okay. 
No, I just I uh, uh, look at that slowly vocal break. <laughs> Time I always sleep so of my awful. I've not noticed that. How selfish am I? What the hell is wrong with me? We should turn in. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't need to read this. I read. We read this. Okay. Let's gonna do a bit here. You're like, oh yeah. Went through. This. Gotta read everything again. No, uh, I forgot. There was like an hour reading. I have to do. But I said I will read all of the novels. Okay, I read all the novel sections once. Once. No more. <laughs> no more. Once and for that being probably probably and more than enough for the average human being actually. But but yeah. Let's take a mild break here. Let's take a mild break. <laughs> This section is just fucking reading. I'll just stop here real quick. I need to, I need to, you know what? I realize, let me go eat a meal. <laughs> this is just the reading section. I, I'll keep the reading section somewhere. I'll archive this bit. I kind of want to listen back to it. <laughs> so, uh, let me, let me go eat something. I was going to do this all in one stream. But I'm going to wait. We're just going to stop it real quick. We'll be back. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh. All right. That was a lot of reading. I shall be back within ten or so minutes. Twenty or so minutes. Thirty or so minutes. We may start in nine. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back for the second. But yeah, yeah, just give me, give me like an hour, hour, yeah, hour, hour. It'll be an hour. Oh, so let me save before I forget to that I have to read it all over again. <laughs> also, me, um, that was a fucking reading section. Oh, where did my save? Oh, there is my save. I'm just, I'm just an idiot. Okay, here's my save. I'm gonna save. Here's my shave. Shave. Shaved. Game shaved. We saved so hard. Look at that. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'll be back. 